Well, for more on this, let's bring in Dan Hoffman, former CIA station chief and a Fox News contributor. Dan, nice to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us. Uh, so, uh, the Russians requested this phone call today. The administration here say they don't know why. And in fact, the Russians themselves are downplaying uh, this phone call. Dmitry Peskov, the spokesman for the Kremlin, saying this, saying, we shouldn't expect any breakthrough from this conversation. This is a working conversation taking place at a very difficult moment. The escalation of tensions in Europe is unprecedented. It is extraordinary. Of course, this requires personal contact at the summit level. So look, they spoke three weeks ago. They're speaking today. There was a chance they would meet on the summit uh, on the sidelines of the OSCE uh, in a couple of weeks. But what can come from a phone call like this? Well, I think it's, first of all, I think it's important to emphasize that Vladimir Putin has seized the initiative by deploying 100,000 troops and creating a false sense of urgency with highly unrealistic uh, public demands uh, about Ukraine's future uh, in terms of joining NATO. Uh, he seized the narrative both domestically, where he's trying to portray himself as the only one who can defend Russia as a besieged fortress, and it gives him the excuse to, uh, to um, deny Russians their basic human rights, which is what he's been doing uh, over the past two decades of his rule. But then regarding the solving the Ukraine crisis, we're framing the narrative as Putin would wish in terms of de-escalation. And make no mistake, he's going to charge us for that. Uh, and it, by framing it that way, we're lending credence to Vladimir Putin's unrealistic demands. Ukraine doesn't even have a seat at the table, and Russia is demanding that we guarantee that they never join NATO. And the Biden administration, I think, first and foremost, diplomatically needs to reframe the narrative in terms of Russia's aggressive uh, threats towards Ukraine and stopping those. Uh, and secondly, echoing what, what others have said on, on, this, uh, on this program, including Secretary Pompeo, that we need to provide more assistance to Ukraine so they can defend themselves, make it clear to Vladimir Putin that any attack on Ukraine would uh, result in a prohibitively high uh, expenditure of Russian blood and treasure. But, but, but so with all that taken into, cons into consideration, do you think that anything can come from this phone call? What's the benefit of President Biden taking it today? Well, I think uh, the phone call is fine. I think what we can expect is that Vladimir Putin is going to want to frame the narrative and say that what should happen on January 10th when uh, Deputy F uh, Secretary um, uh, Wendy Sherman uh, meets with Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Reb Kolf, that they discuss the issues that Russia has tabled, namely uh, further expansion of NATO. That's, I think, what Vladimir Putin wants. From the United States perspective, I think that President Biden should be warning Putin uh, not to uh, launch another attack on Ukraine, and he should then be public, as he has not been thus far, about what has uh, taken place during the conversation. I think that's an opportunity for the United States. Let's see if we waste it or not. Yeah, I mean, it seems as if that's exactly what was discussed a few weeks ago. So I, I, I struggle to see what would change in a conversation today. But moving on, I want to look ahead, uh, Dan, to 2022. 2021, of course, on a foreign policy uh, level, uh, had some pretty big disasters. The Afghanistan withdrawal, an increasingly belligerent China. You've got the Iran talks, which seem to be going backwards. I just wonder, as you look ahead to 2022, uh, if you see those being the big issues that we'll continue to face, or if there are some others that we're not thinking about. I think for sure the national security threat with the shortest fuse is terrorism. Uh, we left behind in Afghanistan that has morphed into a terrorist uh, state where ISIS and Al Qaeda have in, are going to enjoy ungoverned space. And we know from one lesson from 9 11 is they will plot and they will plan against us. For sure, China remains a major threat. Uh, they are threatening Taiwan's independence. And as we all know, they're stealing our intellectual property, mounting massive espionage attacks against us. They concealed the outbreak and severity of coronavirus. They're militarizing the South China Sea. They are the key strategic threat to the United States. And as we've talked about, Russia's on that list as well. But then you've got Iran, and you've got North Korea with ballistic missiles and a nuclear capability. When Kim Jong-un wants to grab our attention, as Putin has, expect that he might launch a ballistic missile test or perhaps even resume a nuclear test. Well, very interesting. And of course, President Biden campaigned on his foreign policy credentials. Let's see if he can uh, move uh, to focus on those and perhaps try and find a solution to them. Uh, Dan Hoffman, have a very happy new year. Thank you for joining us today uh, and all the best. Thanks. To you. Julie.